The Prodigies of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Series 9. Volume 18, August 9, 1925. How requiting God in love for all created things enters the first duty of the creature. My Jesus, give me strength. You who see the great repugnances I feel in writing, such that if it wasn't for blessed obedience and for fear of displeasing you, I would not have written a single word any more. Your long privations daze me and render me incapable of anything. Therefore I need greater help in order to put on paper what your holy will whispers to me. Therefore give me your hand and be always with me. Now while I was fusing myself in the holy divine volition in order to requite God in love for everything he had done in creation for love of creatures, a thought was telling me that it was not necessary to do that, that this way of praying was not pleasing to my Jesus, that these are inventions of my mind. And my always lovable Jesus moving in my interior told me, my daughter, you must know that this way of praying, that is to requite God in love for all the things created by him, is a divine right, and it enters the first duty of the creature. The creation was made for love of man, and even more, our love was so great that had it been necessary, we would have created as many heavens as many suns, stars, seas, earths, plants, and all the rest, or as many creatures as were to come to the light of this world, so that each one of them might have a creation for herself, a universe of her own. And in fact, when everything was created, Adam was the only spectator of all creation. He could enjoy all the good he wanted, and if we did not do so, it was because man could enjoy everything anyway, as if it were his own, even if others also might enjoy it. In fact, who cannot say the sun is mine, and enjoy the light of the sun as much as he wants? Or the water is mine, and quench his thirst and make use of it there where he needs it? Or the sea, the earth, the fire, the air, or my things? and so with many other things created by me. And if it seems that man lacks something, that life suffers hardships, it is because of sin that barring the way of my benefits prevents the things created by me from being abundant for the ungrateful creature. So given all this, that in all created things God bound his love toward each creature. Hers was the duty to requite God with her little love, with her gratitude, with her thank you, to the one who had done so much for her. Not requiting God in love for everything he has done for man and creation is the first fraud that the creature makes against God. It is to usurp his gifts without even recognizing where they come from, and the one who has loved her so much. Therefore this is the first duty of the creature, and this duty is so indispensable and important that she who took to heart all our glory, our defense, our interest, did nothing but make her round through all the spheres, from the smallest to the greatest thing created by God in order to impress her requital of love, of glory, of thanksgiving, for all and in the name of all human generations. Ah, yes, it was precisely my celestial mamma who filled heaven and earth with the requital for everything that God had done in creation. After her came my humanity, which fulfilled this duty so sacrosanct in which the creature had so very much failed, and rendered my celestial father 
benevolent toward guilty man. So these were my prayers, and those of my inseparable mamma. Don't you want, then, to repeat my very prayers? Even more, this is why I have called you into my will, that you may associate yourself with us, and follow and repeat our acts. So I tried as much as I could to make my round through all created things, to give to my God the requital of love, of glory, of gratitude for everything he had done in creation. I seem to see in all created things the requital of love of my Empress Mama and of my beloved Jesus. This requital formed the most beautiful harmony between heaven and earth and bound the Creator to the creature. Each requital of love was a key a little sonata of enrapturing celestial music. Volume 18, August 15, 1925 All created things run toward man. The Feast of the Assumption should be called Feast of the Divine Will. I continued to fuse myself in the holy divine volition to requite my Jesus with my little love for everything he has done for mankind and creation, and my beloved Jesus moving in my interior in order to give more value to my little love, did what I was doing together with me. Meanwhile, he told me, my daughter, all created things were made for man, and all of them run toward man. They have no feet, but they all walk, they all have motion, either to find him or to be found. The light of the sun departs from the height of the heavens in order to find the creature, illuminate him, and warm him. The water walks in order to reach even into the human bowels, to quench his thirst and to refresh him. The plant, the seed, walks rips the earth and forms its fruit to give itself to man. There is not one created thing that does not have a step, a motion, toward the one to whom the eternal Maker had directed it in its creation. My will maintains the order, the harmony, and keeps them all on their way toward the creatures. So it is my will that walks constantly toward the creature within created things. It never stops. It is all motion toward the one whom it loves so much. Yet who says a thank you to my will, which brings him the light of the sun, the water for drinking in order to quench his thirst, the bread to satisfy his hunger, the fruit, the flower to cheer him? and many other things which it brings him to make him happy. Is it not right that since my will does everything for man, man should do everything to fulfill my will? Oh, if you knew the feast that my will makes in created things, when it walks to and serves the one who fulfills my will. My will, operating and fulfilled in the creature, and my will operating in created things kiss each other as they meet. They harmonize. They love each other and form the hymn of adoration for their creator and the greatest portent of all creation. Created things feel honored when they serve a creature who is animated by that same will that forms their very life. On the other hand, my will takes the attitude of sorrow in those same created things when it has to serve one who does not fulfill my will. This is why it happens that many times created things place themselves against man. They strike him. They chastise him. Because they become superior to man, 
as they keep intact within themselves that divine will by which they were animated from the very beginning of their creation, while man has descended down below, for he does not keep the will of his creator within himself. After this I began to think about the feast of my celestial mamma assumed into heaven, and my sweet Jesus, with a tender and moving tone, added, My daughter, the true name of this feast should be Feast of the Divine Will. It was the human will that closed heaven, broke the bonds with its creator, made miseries and sorrow enter the field and put an end to the feast that the creature was to enjoy in heaven. Now this creature, queen of all, by doing the will of the Eternal One always and in everything, even more it can be said that her life was divine will alone, opened the heavens, bound herself to the Eternal One, and restored in heaven the feasts with the creature. Every act she did in the Supreme Will was a feast that she started in heaven. It was sons that she formed to adorn this feast. It was melodies that she sent to delight the celestial Jerusalem. So the true cause of this feast is the eternal will operating and fulfilled in my celestial mamma. It operated such prodigies in her as to astonish heaven and earth chain the eternal one with indissoluble bonds of love and capture the word even into her womb. The very angels, enraptured, repeated among themselves, From where comes so much glory, so much honor, such greatness and prodigies never before seen in this excelling creature? Yet it is from the exile that she is coming. Astonished, they recognized the will of their Creator as life operating in her, and trembling they said, Holy, 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 honor and glory to the will of our Sovereign Lord, and glory, and thrice holy, she who let this supreme will operate. So it is my will that more than anything was and is celebrated on the day of the assumption into heaven of my most holy mother. It was my will alone that made her ascend so high as to distinguish her from among all. Everything else would have been as nothing had she not possessed the prodigy of my will. It was my will that gave her divine fecundity and made her the mother of the word. It was my will that made her see and embrace all creatures together, becoming the mother of all, and loving all with a love of divine maternity, and making her the queen of all. It made her rule and dominate. On that day, my will received the first honors, the glory, and the abundant fruit of its work in creation, and it began its feast, which it never interrupts, for the glorification of its operating in my beloved mother. And even though heaven was opened by me, and many saints were already in possession of the celestial fatherland when the celestial queen was assumed into heaven, however, she herself was the primary cause, having fulfilled the supreme will in everything, and therefore we waited for she who had honored it so much and contained the true prodigy of the most holy will to make the first feast for the supreme volition. Oh, how the whole of heaven magnified, blessed, and praised the eternal will upon seeing this sublime queen enter the Empyrean in the midst of the celestial court all circumfused by the eternal son of the supreme volition. They saw her all studded with the power of the supreme fiat. There had been not even a heartbeat in her that did not have this fiat impressed on it. 
and astonished, they looked at her and said to her, Ascend, ascend higher. It is right that she who so much honored the supreme fiat and through whom we find ourselves in the celestial fatherland have the highest throne and be our queen. And the greatest honor that my mama received was to see the divine will glorified. Volume 18, October 10, 1925 Exchange of Wills Between the Celestial Father and the Most Holy Virgin and Louisa The Most Holy Virgin repeats for the soul who lives in the divine will that which she did for her son. As I was in my usual state, my poor mind found itself within an extremely high atmosphere. I seemed to see the divinity, and upon one knee of the Celestial Father, the Queen Mama, dead as if she had no life. Surprised, I thought to myself, my Mama is dead, but what a happy death to die on the knees of our Creator. But looking more closely, I saw her will as though detached from her body, held in the hands of the Divine Father. Amazed, I looked, and I could not give myself a reason for what I was seeing. But a voice coming from the Divine Throne said, this is the elect among all the elect. She is the all-beautiful. She is the only creature who gave us her will as gift and left it dead upon our knees, in our hands. And we, in exchange, gave her the gift of our will. Greater gift we could not give her, because by acquiring the supreme will, she had the power to make the word descend upon her and to have the redemption of mankind be formed. A human will would have no power nor attraction over us, but a divine will given by ourselves to this incomparable creature won over us, conquered us, enraptured us. And unable to resist, we surrendered to her petitions to make the word descend upon earth. Now we are waiting for you, Louisa, to come to die upon our other knee, giving us your will. And we, in seeing it dead in our hands, as if it no longer existed for you, shall give you the gift of our will. And through you, that is through this will of ours given to you, our fiat will return to live upon earth, these two wills dead upon our knees shall be the ransom for many rebellious wills, and we shall keep them as a precious pledge, which shall repay us for all the evils of the other creatures, because with our will they shall be able to satisfy us. The voice could no longer be heard, and I found myself on the other paternal knee, in the act of breathing my last and dying. But at that moment I found myself inside myself. I am unable to say what I felt within me. Only I prayed from the heart that my will might never again enter into me, that only the divine might have life in me. God alone is the bearer of all goods and the repeater of Jesus within souls. And echoing the fiat of creation, it embraces everything and everyone as though in one breath and requites God for the work of creation, redemption, and sanctification. The divine will operating in us can do anything. It is the true queen who reigns and rules over everything. Then afterwards, I saw my celestial mama with baby Jesus in her arms. As she kissed him, 
and placed him to her breast to give him her most pure milk. And I said to her, My mamma, and what about me? Don't you give anything to me? Oh, please, allow me at least to place my I love you between your mouth and that of Jesus while you kiss, so that my little I love you may run within everything you do. And she said to me, My daughter, please do, place your little I love you, not only in the mouth, but in all the acts that pass between me and my son. You must know that everything I did toward my son, I intended to do toward those souls who were to live in the divine will, because being in it, they would be disposed to receive all the acts I did toward Jesus, and I would find sufficient space in which to place them. So if I kissed my son, I kissed them, because I found them together with him in his supreme will. They were the first to be as though lined up within him, and my maternal love pushed me to let them partake in everything I did to my son. Great graces were needed for those who were to live in this holy will, and I placed all my goods, my graces, my sorrows, at their disposal as their help, as defense, as strength, as support, and as light. And I felt happy and honored with the greatest honors to have as my children the children of the will of the Celestial Father, which I too possessed. And therefore I looked at them also as birds from me, even more it can be said of them what is said about my son, that the first generations found salvation in the merits of the future Redeemer. In the same way, these souls, these future daughters, by virtue of the divine will operating in them, are the ones who incessantly implore salvation and graces for the future generations. They are with Jesus and Jesus is in them. And they repeat together with Jesus that which Jesus contains. Therefore, if you want me to repeat for you what I did for my son, let me always find you in his will, and I shall be generous with my favors toward you. Volume 18, November 12, 1925. How the one who is called to be the head of a mission must enclose all the goods pertaining to that mission in order to communicate them to others. It is the usual way of the eternal wisdom to establish the acts of the creature in order to give completion to the good that it wants to do to her. I was fusing myself in the holy divine volition according to my usual way and my sweet Jesus, moving in my interior, clasped me all to himself, placed himself in the act of giving me a lesson and correction, and told me, My daughter, be attentive in doing your acts in my will. You must know that for the one who is called to be the head of a mission, the more he encloses of the good pertaining to that mission, the more good he shall be able to communicate to others. Those goods shall be like many seeds that he shall lend to others, so that whoever has the fortune of wanting to acquire those seeds may become the possessor of the harvest of those seeds. This happened in Adam, who being the first man, was constituted the head of all generations. And he being the head, it was necessary for him to possess the seeds in order to give to others what is necessary for the development of human life. Regardless of the fact that these seeds have been expanded, dilucidated, known more, according to the good will of the following generations, to the capacity and the application they have used over these very seeds, nevertheless, Adam had them all within himself. And it can be said that everything comes from him. So it can be said that, 
in being created by God, he was endowed with all sciences. What others learn with so many efforts, he possessed as gift in a surprising way. So he possessed the knowledge of all the things of this earth. He had the science of all plants, of all herbs, and of the virtue that each of them contained. He had the science of all species of animals and of how he should use them. He had the science of music, of singing, of writing, of medicine, in sum, of everything. And if the generations possessed each one its special science, Adam possessed them all. See, then, how it is necessary for the one who must be the head to enclose within himself all the good that he must share with others? And the same with you, Louisa, my daughter. Since I have called you as the head of a special mission, more than a new Adam, and here it is not about human sciences, but about the science of sciences, which is my will, science all of heaven. I want you to enclose within yourself all the seeds that my will contains. And the more acts you do in it, the more knowledges you acquire, the more rays of light you shall place on the sun of my will, so that with greater fullness of light, it shall be able to diffuse more for the good of the generations, in such a way that, stirred by the fullness of light, they shall be able to know with greater clarity the good which my will contains, what it means to live in it, and the great good with which they are enriched. It shall happen as with the sun, that because it possesses such great fullness of light, can easily take the whole earth, as though in its power, warm it, illuminate it, and fecundate it, in such a way that all may know, some more, some less, the good it does by bringing its light to all. But if the sun in the height of its sphere were poor in light, the light that descends down below could not fully illuminate all the earth. At the most, some small portion of the earth that rotates closer to the sun. And if to the sun that was to illuminate the earth naturally, I gave such fullness of light for the good of all generations, much more do I want to fill with fullness of light the sun of my will that must illuminate souls, warm them, and cast into them the fecundity of the seed of divine sanctity. Just as I chose Adam as the head, just as I chose a point in the heavens in which to fix the center of the sun which was to illuminate the earth, so did I choose you as the center of the sun of my will. And the fullness of light must be so great that all may be able to enjoy it, and be invested by this light, and each one may make it his own. This is why your complete acts in my will are needed, as well as the knowledge that I keep manifesting to you, in order to form the fullness of this light. It is the usual way of the eternal wisdom to establish the acts of the creature in order to give completion to the good that it wants to do to her. So it happened for the coming of redemption upon earth by the eternal word. It took the course of four thousand years, and during this time all the acts that creatures were to do in order to dispose themselves to earn the great good of redemption had been established, as well as all the graces and knowledges that the Supreme Majesty was to give in order to make known that same good that the descent of the word would bring into their midst. And so here come the patriarchs, the holy fathers, the prophets, and all the good of the Old Testament, who with their acts were to cover the way, the staircase in order to reach the fulfillment of the longed-for redemption. But this is not enough. 
As good and holy as their acts were, there was the so very high wall of original sin, which maintained the division between them and God. This is why a virgin was needed, conceived without original sin, innocent, holy, and enriched by God with all graces, who made all the good acts of the course of four thousand years as though her own. She covered them with her innocence, sanctity, and purity, in such a way that the divinity would see those acts through the acts of this innocent and holy creature, who not only embraced all the acts of the ancients, but surpassed them all with her own. And this is why she obtained the descent of the word upon earth. It happened to all the good acts of the ancients, as to one who has much gold and silver, but the image of the king, which gives the value of money to that precious metal, is not impressed on it. So even though it contains value in itself, it cannot be called value of money, which can circulate in the kingdom with the right of currency. However, suppose that that gold or silver were acquired by the king, and that giving it the shape of coins, he impressed his image upon them. Here is the right of currency acquired by that gold. So the virgin did. She impressed her innocence her sanctity, the divine will that she possessed as whole, upon them. She presented them all together to the divinity, and she obtained the longed-for Redeemer. So the Virgin completed all the acts that were needed in order to make the Word descend upon earth. But this was not the end so that the Redeemer might have his field of action upon her, and whoever wanted to might use those acts as coins with which to purchase heaven for himself, the imprint of innocence, of sanctity, and of the divine will was needed, and the imprint of the operating of the word himself was needed in order to make man rise to heaven. If that of the Virgin was enough to make me descend into the midst of creatures, in order to make man rise, my divine operating was needed. And so this is why I embraced all those acts and I made them my own. I made up for all. I accomplished everything. And for all, I placed the divine imprint on all the good acts, from the first to the last man who is to come upon her. And this imprint was made by me with unheard of pains and with the shedding of my blood. And so, like magnanimous king, I gave to all the coins with which to purchase heaven for themselves. All this had been established by the uncreated wisdom, and not even one act of all this could be missing in order for redemption to take place. Now, my daughter, just as it was with redemption, so it shall be with my will. In order to make it known and to make it reign as prime act of life in the creature, the fulfillment of the acts is needed. You, Louisa, too, on the example of my celestial mamma and of mine, must embrace in my will all the acts done in the Old Testament, those of the Queen of Heaven those done by me, those which are done and shall be done by all the good and the saints up to the last day. And upon each one of them you shall place your seal of requital of love, of blessing, of adoration, with the sanctity and the power of my will. Nothing must escape you. My will embraces everything. You, too, must embrace everything and everyone, and place my will alone at the first place of honor upon all the acts of creatures. It shall be your imprint, 
with which you shall imprint the image of my will on all the acts of creatures. Therefore your field is vast. I want to see you in my will, flowing over all the graces and the prodigies that I did in the Old Testament, to give me your requital of love and of thanksgiving, and in the acts of the patriarchs and prophets, to make up for their love. There is not one act in which I do not want to find you. I would not be satisfied nor content if I did not find you in all the acts of creatures that have been done and shall be done, nor would you be able to say that you have completed everything in my will. You would lack something of the true living in my will. Therefore be attentive. If you want the fullness of light to be enough, as to be able to illuminate all peoples with the sun of my will. The one who wants to give light to all must embrace all as though in one single embrace by making himself life and substitution of everything and of everyone. Is my will perhaps not life of everything? And is this life not requited with so many bitternesses? Is there not the need, then, for the one who would flow in every one in order to sweeten these bitternesses by substituting as act of life with my own will for each act of the ungrateful creature? You have reached the end of the Prodigies of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Volume 18. Fiat. 